Today, I'm leaving. I'm about to head off to the airport. Shout out to Tamal though for letting me stay for two weeks and making me dinner and breakfast and doing my laundry and being my mama. She's great. I'm just about ready to leave. The floor's kind of dirty, but like, whatever. All right, time to go. Sayonara. I'm gonna get one last whiff of uh, this very homey scent. Okay. Oh shit, I'm dizzy now, what the fuck? All right, let's go. Let's go. Oh fuck, I had to carry this thousand pound bag. This fanny pack, this duffel bag, and this heavy laptop bag, all the way to Sky Tree. Ah, oh, fuck this shit. Ah, oh, fuck my life. Ah, oh, fuck me. Ah, oh, fuck me. Fuck me, fuck me, fuck me. Fuck me, fuck me, fuck me. Fuck me, e. Fuck, fuck me, e. Fuck me, e. Fuck, fuck me, e. Hey, fuck. Uh, fuck me. Fuck me. Fuck. Ah. 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 I got the fuck me in the back. Fuck me is attached. I'm almost there, boys. One more block. Heading off to the airport now. Still, fuck me. Whoever invented this thing is an absolute genius. Here we are, baby. Hey, finally made it. Let's get the f to America, boys. The airport security in Japan is so easy to get through. I didn't have to take off my hat, my chain, my shoes, my watch, my rings, I didn't have to take off anything. What the fuck? Last time I flew out of Japan, I got some ramen. Every time I leave Japan, I should just like get some ramen. That would be like the tradition. I might get the spicy dip noodle. Or I might get the special dip noodles. Or I might get the normal dip noodle. Honestly, I think I'm just gonna get some special soy sauce and pork bone noodles. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I just got my special soy sauce and pork bone noodles. That ramen was pretty shit, but... It was very filling shit. Crazy shit always happens in Tokyo, but this is probably the craziest thing that happened to me so far. I just met this rapper. His name is Jubex. The reason I know you is because I saw like, just a bunch of YouTube videos talking shit about you. That's kind of why I know you. <laughs> yeah. It was like about like industry, like plant shit. Yeah, they're like, probably like, industry yeah, plant this shit. is a plant, you know? He has like people making his music and all like, that. Yeah, shit. what is that even about? Like record deals, like pushing you and shit like that? Um, yeah, people think I'm signed to like a major label, which oh, is like shit. forcing me, even though I'm not signed to any major label at all. Um, people think like, I, I guess I'm just like an artist that like um, a major label found and they oh, just shit. like, you know, c uh, created my music and like telling yeah. me what to do and like, I Yo. guess like the styles and stuff. Okay, so you make your own, all your own music. Yeah, I write it myself. You know, okay. I like do everything. Um, oh, shit. You know, sing. Yeah. So. I fuck with that. I fuck with that. Yeah. That's dope. I Thank listen. You, I listened to one of them. What was your main big one? It was uh, like traps. Was that? Yeah, no, it was not it. It was loner. It was yeah, loner. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I have been loner. But I remember it was pretty good. <laughs> Thanks, man. It was pretty good. Yeah. 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 <sighs> oh my god, I'm so tired. I could eat a horse. All right, so just now I just rode the escalator and this dude started talking to me. He was like, isn't it funny how we just came off the flight from Japan and like all of us are still on the left side of the escalator and then the right side's like no one's at because that's how it is in Japan. So everyone's on the left side and then you go on the right side if you want to walk up and everyone's still doing that even though we're in America now. So it's kind of funny. I'm like so tired right now, bro. My eyes are kind of burning. Definitely not like wait. All right, I'm in LA now. The baggage claim guy told me to go left and I took a left and I don't even know where I am now. What the fuck? Um, hola. Gracias. I miss Mexicans. Throughout my life, Mexicans always gave me the most love. I don't know why. Sometimes I feel like people are mean. Like the airport people are mean. You know, the security people and stuff like that. They're kind of aggressive sometimes. They're kind of rude. Kind of grumpy. I don't know. But then like, I kind of get it now. Because I mean, some of these people going through security are just 
kind of retarded. They're just like, oh, where do I go? Do I go this way? Do I go this way? I don't know what to do. It's just obvious ass shit that you should know. There was this black lady, like the security lady. She's like pointing at this Chinese dude. She's like, shoes off. Shoes off. And the Chinese dude's like, oh, go to your, the, 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 the shoes? Or the, 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 the shoes? The, I, the, take out, I take out the shoes? What the fuck? You know what to do. Just do it. I understand why these security people are grumpy as shit because everyone's so slow. They're like, oh, do I do this? Do I do that? I just hurry the f up, you know what I'm saying? Alright, so I just got on the plane. The plane ended up being delayed, which sucks. Big booty hole. It's cool though. The delay was annoying, but there's so many people complaining on the plane. I don't know. Some people just think the world revolves around them, you know? And they're like, why isn't the plane working? They expect me to sit here for one hour for blah blah blah. And why can't they just do this? I get it, you're frustrated. But like. What are you gonna do about it? It's not like they're doing this on purpose just to make you wait an hour, you know? Like, everyone was complaining though, it was so annoying. There was this lady complaining behind me the whole time. Like, we're all frustrated, you know? We could all be frustrated in our, in our heads, but like, if you're just talking about it to someone you don't even know sitting next to you, you're just complaining to them about all your problems and how you're so unhappy with this with this service, something something that the plane people can't even control. Everyone in the cabin is not your therapist. I don't know, but like, yeah, it's annoying that the flight got delayed, but the people that were like obnoxiously complaining the whole time were way more annoying. All right, so it's a couple hours later. I went to Starbucks, got some coffee. We in the middle of San Diego right now, but I'm a little hungry now, so finally get to do what I've been waiting for. Eat some Mexican food at Don Pancho's Taco Shop. Mochi. One year ago, I graduated high school, packed my bags, and headed off to the land of the rising sun. I moved there July 1st, and now it's August 4th, so it's a little over a year later. So I wanted to reflect on the year and talk about what I've learned in Japan. Not only that, but my first year out of high school, my first year as an independent young calf. So first off, the food. This chicken place is bomb. This ramen place is bomb. Milk tea is bomb, but we knew that since the jump. Shibire chicken is bomb, as we discovered recently. Like, food in America is bomb but food in Japan is atomic bomb. In America, you get addicted to drugs. In Japan, you get addicted to food. You know how in America, you're just chilling at night and all of a sudden you just, you just start craving heroin? Same shit in Japan. Those 2 a.m. ramen runs are so satisfyingly satisfying that my satisfaction is satisfied. I learned that eating at home saves a lot of money. Health is important. It's not healthy eating ramen every day. Make sure to eat your veggies. Supply yourself with sufficient nutrients, vitamins, and minerals. I learned that once you're an adult, no one tells you what to do anymore, which is great, but there's also no one pushing you to work hard and succeed. You have to motivate yourself to work harder. It's hard to do every single day, but you have to realize that with whatever goal you're working towards, there's so many other people around the world doing the same thing, working harder than you. So you just gotta work harder than them. The world's in your hands. You just gotta go out there and take it. When I first came out to Japan, I had no doubts that I was gonna be successful. I was gonna be rich and famous. Maybe not exactly, but I was at least gonna make enough to be fine on my own. But throughout the year, I started having doubts. Am I even that good of a YouTuber? Maybe I was naive and I'm actually not as good as I thought I was. Like I just make shitty vlogs or videos in my room talking to the camera. Is there even a place for me on this platform? There's so much funnier vloggers, more talented vloggers, higher production vloggers that have resources to do whatever they want. I started to question, am I good enough for this? This thought hit me hard because this is all I have. This was my dream since I was a little kid. I really don't see myself doing anything else besides entertainment, YouTube. So having thoughts like this killed me inside because I really don't know what I would do if I don't succeed. I don't wanna be that person that moved to LA to pursue their acting career and then have to move back to their hometown after five years because it didn't work out. But then I took a step back and really thought about why I do this. And that reason is because it's fun. Yeah, YouTube was my dream, but that's not why I did it. I did it simply because it's my hobby. That's why I made videos consistently since I was 12 years old, even when nobody watched for the first four years. So I realized it doesn't really matter if I make it or not. I'll be making videos no matter what because it was always something that I like to do. Hell, I'll vlog about not making it if I don't make it. If YouTube doesn't work out and I gotta be a garbage man, I'll make some trash vlogs. 
literally and that's why i'm different see while other youtubers are doing crazy stuff or shooting beautiful cinematic films or putting on a big show for the video my vlogs are just real maybe i'll do a little extra to try to be funny or entertaining but these are real people these are genuine interactions and i try my best to capture this real life that i live and hopefully it's entertaining enough for you guys to enjoy it and i seriously plan to do this till the day i die like whatever i do whatever is going on in my life you guys will know about it that's what being a quesadilla is it's knowing me the realest quesadilla will know exactly what's going on in my life just like you're my best friend my vlogs are not just vlogs it's a tv show of my life so while i'm gonna work hard to achieve my dreams i'll make sure to have fun with it because that's what it was all about in the first place i've been in america for over a month now you'll see what i've been up to in the next videos but i go back to japan on august 15th and i'm really excited to take this second year head on and really fight for what i want in life my goal last year was to get a million subscribers by 2019 or during 2019 if not then be fully independent pay for all my stuff be my own man that's really what i want to be stable without relying on my parents or anything now that hasn't happened yet and i can only blame myself for that but i'm gonna really go for it in this next year for now i'm gonna finish 2019 strong so sit back relax grab your popcorn and enjoy the story of k okay.